Yo, what is up guys, it's boys Akagi here with the movie for what if Naruto had Bond's powers. I've been wanting to do this what if for around 4 months now, so I'm finally getting around to doing it. So yeah, hopefully you guys are going to enjoy the what if. So we start this off with Naruto running through the village. In this, he's actually become quite the thief and he just stole from the wrong stall. Now five villagers were chasing him down. But Naruto, he's been through this a bunch of times and knows the best way to escape them. The forest of death. This is usual hideout since no villager would go in there because of the dangerous animals. So Naruto runs in and of course the villagers don't go because they just say ah, the animals will take care of him anyways. So with Naruto, he's still running when he actually comes by a cave he's never seen before. And Naruto crawls in to see what it is. And in there it's a golden cup filled with clear water. And the cup was on a small rock surrounded by grass. Naruto was about to reach out for the cup but he heard a loud roar from behind him. He turned around and there was a huge bear, three times the size of a regular one. The cave wasn't that deep so he couldn't like hide further in. So as soon as he turned around the bear reached in and managed to use his razor sharp claws and cut Naruto's neck up to his face. And this cut hit some vital arteries in his neck. This artery carries blood to his brain, so within seconds he would die. Naruto backed up from the entrance as much as he could and his hand bumped into the cup. Naruto contemplated and said, at least I'll have one more drink before I die. And he drank the water and felt nothing and he slowly shut his eyes. And laid back awaiting his death and he actually fell asleep. Seven hours later and Naruto woke up in the same cave and he began looking around and everything seemed normal. He checked his neck for injuries but it was fine and he just thought eh, maybe he was dreaming. But it couldn't be because he had some scars on his neck and slightly on his face so something must have happened because he doesn't remember getting this. Then he looked at the empty cup still in his hand and he wonders if, this, if it had anything to do with you know, him blacking out. So Naruto crawled out of the cave and begins to run home and while he was running, Naruto realized he was actually quicker than usual by a lot and he was running at the speeds of Jonin. So uh, also at the start, the reason why the villagers were chasing him is because he stole a fox mask. So that'll be useful later. So while Naruto is going home, he puts it on so no one would recognize him. And while walking, he overheard three men talking about an underground fight club for civilians, where the winner would take home a large cash prize. But the fights weren't for another few months, so Naruto makes his way home and he thinks about the possibility of joining the fights. You know, he, would, um, he would have the academy to go to though because right now Naruto is 11, so uh, Naruto he still decides that it's worth a shot. The only thing he's learned from the academy is substitution jutsu so I mean that's the only way he'll be able to get out of there so that's an option. So Naruto actually tries training, he heard some of the older students in the academy talk about how they would go to the training ground and punch logs to build strength. So Naruto went out and tried it and when he punched the log it just broke in half. He was shocked to say the least, he's never had strength like this before. So day after day, Naruto punches logs, boulders, and straight up walls, just anything that could withstand his strength for him to train. And because of his incredible speed and strength, Naruto developed his own move, Assault Hunt. He would dash forward as fast as he could and force, and the force being enough to decapitate someone. Think of like A and Killer B's Lariat move, yeah. But instead of two people, it's just Naruto. So two months go by and Naruto has actually been doing better in school. He's intentionally not placing first of course but he's not bottom of the barrel. But more importantly time for the fight club. Naruto enters this bar and he has his fox mask on and regular black pants and a black shirt. In the bar it's just regular people drinking so he was confused where the fights were 
So he sat at the back of the room just waiting for any sign of these quote unquote fights. Soon a guy came in and he looked buff. I'm talking like all my buff. I'm talking Escanor buff. And he goes to the bartender and knocks on the counter six times exactly. And the bartender nodded and escorted him to the back door. So Naruto knew that, you know, knew that's how he would get in because that guy looks like a fighter. So when the bartender got back, Naruto went up and did the same thing. Granted, Naruto was like short, like he is in canon, but after drinking the water, he can call it that, Naruto grew a little bit, like four inches. So the bartender was a bit sus, but he told him to, you know, he took him to the same room. In there, it was really dark, but a spotlight was on the ring in the middle of the room, like a fighting ring. And then an announcer started to speak. Fighters at the ready. You will all be chosen at random until there's only one victor. And remember, killing is always allowed. Now the first round will be. And another spotlight started moving around the room from person to person until it stopped on Naruto. Young man, please make your way to the stage. And his challenger, the spotlight started moving again and stopped on the really buff guy from earlier. Naruto took a nervous gulp as the hulking 7 foot 400 pounds beast walked into the ring. The ring actually lowered a few inches under his weight and the announcer said, Boy, I wish you luck. Now, begin. And the man rushed at Naruto because despite his size, he was pretty quick. Naruto gnarly dodged a right hook but the guy didn't let up. He sent blow after blow and naruto dodged the first five but after getting hit it felt like a truck just crashed into him but he got punched again and again and his body began bruising all over bones breaking until the man stopped lifted naruto off the ground and slammed him back into it in a pool of blood the man turned around and started like pumping his fist in the air like yeah and the crowd began cheering with Naruto just cursing himself for ever coming here because this hurt like hell. But as seconds go by, Naruto began to felt actually better. He was getting more strength in his body and as he was slowly regening, Naruto thought, so that's what saved me. And he's referring to when he got attacked by the bear or I don't even know if you can call that a bear to how huge it was. But 15 seconds go by and the guy is still celebrating but Naruto was slowly starting to get up but no one realized. He turned towards the guy and with one step dashed towards him and hearing a sound the guy turned around but got punched right across the face sending him out of the ring and denting a brick wall. The crowd went silent as Naruto stood up and the fast fox mask still somehow intact. And a burst of energy came from the crowd, cheering, applause, everything. The announcer got on and said, Somehow the runt managed to not only come back from a full-scale assault from Big Red, that's the guy's like nickname by the way, but with only one punch sent him flying out of the ring. Unbelievable. And the coordinators of the match were really suspicious of Naruto's feats. The, the, no, they thought he was using chakra, which was strictly prohibited since the fight club is amongst villagers and most of them can't use chakra anyways. So they brought in a Byakugan user and he checked and said, yeah, the guy, he's fine. He has chakra flowing through him like any normal person, but it's pretty weak. It actually looks like it's being restrained. And this is the whole nine tails affecting Naruto's chakra. So yeah, rounds 2 to 6 involved people other than Naruto, which would move on to the semi-finals. So Naruto got pitted against a swords swordsman and weapons were allowed and unfortunate for Naruto, this is a master at his craft, able to cut a fly in mid-air. A fly, like the insect. So the match begins and the swordman just took his swordsman just took his stance and had his sword pointed towards Naruto. Naruto slowly came closer to the guy and he tried to outspeed him and like swiping his legs to trip him up but the old man he had quick reflexes and even though he couldn't keep up with Naruto's speed he sliced before Naruto even started moving 
and by the time he was there, the sword cut Naruto's arm clean off. But despite the pain, like Naruto turned around and grabbed the sword and broke it, and then took that broken piece of sword and shoved it through the man's chest, killing him. Plus, he was old, so bro was about to like die any second. And the crowd again started going wild. People saying, like people not knowing how Naruto is taking down these veterans to fighting that have been fighting in this very club for years. So Naruto went back to the waiting area and time for the finals. Naruto versus a guy named Kai. And Kai was an average guy, he was built, not anything special, but he was actually using chakra. You see, the fight, this fight was actually rigged. The coordinators put Kai in to make sure they didn't lose their money. So onto the fight. Naruto enters the ring and as the announcer says begin, both of them run at each other trading blow for blow until the guy started using chakra, enhancing his punches, breaking Naruto down. And Naruto knew he wouldn't, this wouldn't end well and began looking for any way to beat this guy until he felt his strength. And I mean, you might be wondering, felt his strength? Like, what do you mean? It kind of sounds weird. But Naruto could feel the guy's strength. It was like a cup of water and instinctively he drew on his strength and he was able to siphon all his strength away from him. Physical hunt. Kai's punches began to slow down and weaken and they felt like they were just tapping Naruto. But Naruto on the other hand felt empowered, his strength growing two times as it was but and he punched Kai once. This punch sent this guy flying across the ring and into the ropes. The crowd was and you know his body is frail like an old man because Naruto siphoned off all his basically all his strength. strength enough that you know he, he had enough that he just wouldn't die straight away and after the punch he was out like cold and the crowd was cheering but the coordinators were not happy their trump card just got bested but yeah so of uh after a while kai got his strength back you know it it um like the strength went back to him and all the damage dealt it was he could still feel it but it was sort of healed so Naruto had his hand lifted in the air by the announcer and a sack of money was handed to him, 100,000 yen. That's around 100, uh, I mean a thousand dollars. But as soon as he got his money, Naruto didn't stick around for long. Like he left as soon as possible because some of the people who lost were looking at him like they were ready to fight, even like the staff in the room. So he dipped. Naruto ran around for a bit and then went to his house because you know he was trying to confuse anyone who was potentially following him so naruto used some of his winnings to actually buy a weapon a bow staff and he got it at this rundown weaponsmith and it was gold so it looked cool and the guy he just gave it to naruto for free he said he had it for like 50 years and never got it sold so the guy just told Naruto to have it and because Naruto was still wearing the mask like he didn't discriminate him just for being Naruto by being the Nine Tails in Cherokee. So the Hokage who would check up on Naruto now and then was actually watching this entire thing through the crystal ball. He saw Naruto's abilities in the fight club and he also and his almost instant proficiency with the bow staff. Like he just bought it and this guy was almost mastery level. So he called in Kakashi to fetch Naruto. So while Naruto was training with his bow staff in his apartment, he got a knock at the door. He stopped and went to check who it was who to check who was there and it was a Jonin with white hair and a mask. And Kakashi told him he was being summoned by Lord Third. So Naruto had nothing else to do, so he went. At the Hokage's office, Hirzen says to Naruto that he's he knows about his trip to the fight club and Naruto is wondering how like he never told anyone he wore a whole disguise but he is the Okage so he must have connections everywhere so Naruto came clean about how he drank some weird liquid and now he has these crazy abilities like regeneration and enhanced speed and strength so Hiruzen raised an eyebrow to this and asked where did he get it from 
and he said oh he just got it from this random cave in the forest of death and Hiruzen thought about that for a second and he asked Naruto to continue so Naruto asked if he could actually leave the academy and become an Ambu he is obviously qualified enough so why not Hiruzen didn't, be a, didn't see a problem with this and he was almost going to immediately say yes but Kakashi had other ideas he didn't know Naruto's full strength and he didn't feel like he was qualified at all he's a 11 year old academy kid what can he do so Hiruzen suggested why don't they fight and Kakashi kind of chuckled a bit him fighting a kid okay okay Okage so they both head out into this area right in front of the Okage mansion the perfect place to spar and as the match starts Kakashi starts feeling weaker like his strength is being drained from him and this was all a part of Naruto's plan he has started siphoning off Kakashi's strength to use as for his own and with this boost in strength almost like fivefold he just rushed Kakashi kicking him right in the chest sending him back like into the dirt and Kakashi was too weak to catch himself so he just ragged all on the ground and Naruto won like that easily and Kakashi all he, I mean here is an all he could do was clap like this kid is something else. So right then and there, Hiruzen appointed Naruto the role of Ambu, and this lasted for two years. During his time as an Ambu, Naruto would be known for his brutality. He developed a technique to rip people's heart right out of their chest using his bow staff, which he later realized he could split into four sections. So imagine two nunchucks connected. With it, he could snatch pretty much anything, including organs, right out of people's bodies. And one of, and in one of his Ambu missions, Naruto was sent out alone to a very poor town. He was sent there to assassinate a corrupt businessman. Just imagine Gato's cousin or something. So while he was there, he saw a girl with red hair and bite marks all over her skin. She was sitting next to some trash and Naruto couldn't turn a blind eye, he felt sorry for her. So he went over to the girl and gave her some of the food he was carrying and she thanked Naruto over and over and started eating everything he gave her like a, a pig. And Naruto chuckled a bit and asked her if she'd want to come back to his village and without even knowing what village it was she nodded. So after Naruto finished his mission he took the girl back to the leaf and explained the situation to Hiruzen. And to Naruto's surprise, Hiruzen was pretty on board with it, a bit too quick. And the reason why is because this girl was Karin, and Hiruzen wanted whatever Uzumaki were still alive to be in the leaf. So, two years go by, and after another mission, Naruto reported to Hiruzen's office. By now, he's 13, and the members of um, Konoha 12 would be graduating. So in his office, Hiruzen asked Naruto if he would want to join one of the Genin teams. And Naruto said, why would I want to join them? And Hiruzen said, it could be a learning experience, plus you don't know anyone your age. Naruto was reluctant and he didn't want to go, but he knew he didn't have a choice in the matter. So he was appointed to a random team. He didn't choose. The only thing he knew is that the sensei would be Kakashi, which he knew really well um, during his like Ambu days, since Kakashi wasn't an Ambu at the time, but he would normally talk to Kakashi and advise him what to do on certain missions. So while Naruto was leaving to go to the academy, he bumped into Kakashi and they both walked over to the academy. When they walked into the class, only two people were there waiting, Sasuke and the red-haired girl Naruto brought to the village so long ago he didn't even remember her or recognize her. But Sasuke was surprised to see Naruto. He left so long ago he thought, I don't know, he died in a ditch somewhere. But he didn't want to say anything of course, he's still in his emo phase. So Kakashi called the two up to the roof where they would do their little introductions. So when they got there, first up was Karin and she said her name was Karin Uzumaki. And that last name, Naruto didn't know she was an Uzumaki. And she goes on to say that she likes everything about the leaf 
and she dislikes her hometown because that's where she was used by shinobis as a tool to carry around and heal them anytime. And her goal is to pay back the person who saved her from a miserable life. Sasuke, he was just being Sasuke. We all know how Sasuke is. My is not a dream, it's, it's gonna be reality. Yeah, all that stuff. Sasuke doesn't change. Naruto just says his name is Naruto Uzumaki, and now Karin is more interested. She thought she was the last Uzumaki. So Naruto says he likes ramen and money, and dislikes losing money, and he doesn't really have a goal. Kakashi thought as much, and the team didn't seem too bad. So he told them about the bell test tomorrow, and he should meet them at the training ground. And that's really it. And Kakashi body flickered away. And before Naruto left, Karin actually came up to talk to him. She she told Naruto that she was grateful for you know him saving him all those years ago. Well, not really all those years ago, like a year ago. And Naruto was confused what she was talking about, and she and he said, uh, "I think you have the wrong person." And Nar and like Karin said, "Don't you remember? Like you saved me. Like you were at the." You were at this one town and I was sitting beside some trash and stuff like that. And Naruto was like, oh, that was you. And like he starts looking looking her like from head to toe and he's like, damn, you've you've really changed. Because back then Karin she was malnourished, she was looking like a whole skeleton. So she looks like actually healthy. And Karin blushed a bit because Naruto was giving her like all these compliments. But yeah, so Naruto just said, you know, he has to go and Karin said, yeah, sure, see you tomorrow. So fast forward to tomorrow and Naruto just gets up. He doesn't really eat much and he heads out to the training ground. There he sees both Sasuke, he sees the entire team waiting. Like Kakashi isn't that late. Naruto knocked some sense into him uh, like a couple of years ago telling him like not to be late. So he's there on time actually and Naruto is the late one. So he gets there and Kakashi begins to explain more about the bell test saying that they need to, the first two people to collect the bells will like not go, will like proceed to becoming Genin and the person who doesn't get sent back to the academy. Of course Naruto, he already knows this trick. And Kakashi was going to, like, Naruto can't participate. That was one of the rules. So hearing this, Naruto, he was pretty, you know, bummed out. But he's their sensei, so he, he doesn't really have a say in the matter. So the bell test begins and Sasuke rushes into the forest. But Karin stayed there to Kakashi's surprise. She released her adamantian chains and rushed him. He pulled out a kunai to block the oncoming attacks. But after multiple blows, they got knocked away. Kakashi had to keep dodging but he felt slightly slower and weaker. The only other time he felt this way was when he fought Naruto and that's when it hit him like that damn Naruto he's taking his strength. He looked back to Naruto and he was just pacing around whistling like he was doing nothing and Kakashi just cursed Naruto in his head. But this distraction caused him. While he was looking away Karin used a chain and cut the belt cut the yeah cut the belt the bells were attached to and kakashi tried grabbing them but he was too slow because you know his physical abilities were being drained and karin grabbed them and had uh, one of the chains to kakashi's neck and he just raised his hand in defeat like okay you got it so sasuke walked out and he was pissed he didn't get to do anything but bro you're just weak <laughs> i'm kidding so normally Kakashi would disqualify, um, would send Kakashi and Karin back to the academy for not using teamwork. But uh, technically they did. Naruto did help out Karin even though he wasn't even supposed to. But you know, he let it slide. So uh, the next week or so, the team does regular D rank missions. And you can tell this got real boring for Naruto real quick. And he demanded to have a higher mission, even one level higher, like a C rank. So when they went back into Hiruzen's office, Kakashi requested a higher rank mission and they got it. They got a C rank mission to escort the bridge builder Tazuna back to the land of waves. Naruto and Naruto, Karin and Sasuke were pretty excited to be getting a higher rank mission so they won't have to be 
re, uh, like helping old people cross the road and finding cats and meaningless tasks like that. So Tazuna walks in and he is drunk as ever and he sees Naruto and he's like, finally, someone competent to take me on the land of waves. And he looks at the other two he's like, uh, whatever, they can, they can pass. So the next day, the, the team, team seven is ready to take Tazuna and he actually sobered up overnight. So they come through and as they're walking, they see, no, well, Naruto and Kakashi see a puddle up ahead. And you know, it's the middle of the dry season. There hasn't been any rain in days. So this is a weird thing to see. So as they're, so Naruto and Kakashi look at each other and they already know what's up. So as they walk past the puddle, two demon brothers jump out and immediately Naruto turns around and uses his staff to, he like breaks it into the four pieces and uses snatch, tearing out the demon brothers hearts in a split second. And this freaked Tazuna out, like what is this kid? And even Kakashi, like Kakashi knew about this move. But he thought like that nod they gave each other was to, you know, capture them and get information from them. But I don't think it translated. Nar and Naruto looks at Kakashi. He's like, what? And Kakashi's like, oh boy, you, I knew like you shouldn't have been an Ambu that at such a young age. But I mean, it's whatever now. They're dead already. So they continue on and they just like leave the bodies to decay or whatever. So they continue on the path. And the further they go, the foggier it starts to get. And then Kakashi heard a sound coming by. It was like something flying through the air. And at the last moment, it was a sword. He realized and he yelled for everyone to duck. But Naruto, he's a bit of, he's a bit lax. He doesn't want to try anymore because he's been basically quote unquote killed so many times. He doesn't even care. He's been stabbed. He's been electrocuted everything in the book and he's been fine so he has grown more like uncaring of of things in the world so the sword comes by and lodges itself right in naruto's side and everyone is freaking out like oh my god naruto are you okay and naruto just says yeah it's whatever and he just drags the sword out of his body and it just heals up fine zabuza steps out and he's like what is this kid like, I'm called the Demon of the Mist, but what did I just see? So, Naruto sees Zabuza and he's like, hey, this is your sword. And Zabuza is like, yes, it, it is. And Naruto just throws the sword back to Zabuza. And Kakashi's like, why are you giving him his weapon? Naruto's like, hey, he's going to be weak anyways. And Zabuza is like, what did you just say? And he's like, you're going to be weak anyways. And Zabuza says, all right, we'll see about that. And he rushes Naruto. And he tries swinging his sword at him, but Naruto just blocks it with his arm, cutting into Naruto's arm. And Zabuza thinks this guy is suicidal or something, why does he keep injuring himself? But as he pulls the sword out, it just heals itself. And he's like, what? But in this state of shock, Naruto starts siphoning off his powers, weakening him to the point where he can't even lift his own sword. And Naruto kicks Zabuza across the face and into the tree. And as he's sitting there, just unable to get up, and Naruto is growing more buff. He's growing in height and size. And Naruto towers over Zabuza, who's on the ground, just looking up at death. And Naruto raises his foot and just steps in Zabuza's face over and over and over. And Haku is seeing this, and she jumps out of like the woodworks, and she's like, What are you doing to Sensei? And she tries throwing Senbon at Naruto, but Karin steps in with her adamantian chains and blocks all of them. Karin dashed at Haku and using her chains to get a few strike in, strike in, and then Kakashi with his Sharingan out came in to back Karin up. And Haku wasn't thinking straight; she was enraged because of the death of Zabuza. So when Karin used her chains to wrap her wrap around her legs, she didn't know what was coming until it was too late. Kakashi used his signature Chidori and shoved it through Haku's chest, killing her. Naruto walked over to the two and said, seems like you two are good here. And like when Naruto walked back to Tazuna, he said, you have a lot of explaining to do. This isn't like any C-rank mission I've been on. 
and Tazuna had to look down in shame. So as they walked back to his house where they could rest up a bit, Tazuna explained, um, explained everything about Gato and what the bridge will do for his whole like, family. So Naruto and uh, Kakashi understand but I mean that doesn't, that doesn't mean he should be lying. But you know, they're already here so why not just finish the mission. So when they get to Tazuna's house, his daughter is there to greet them at the door and she already prepared dinner. So Team 7 and Tazuna sat down to eat but got interrupted by a little runt, Inari. Inari came into the kitchen talking about how you guys should give up and this and that and Naruto or anybody on Team 7 was giving Inari the time of day. So this really like this really pissed him off because he's used to getting a reaction and he was getting nothing from them. So he just went to his room just bawling his eyes out <laughs> like he always does. So until the next day they are like patrolling the bridge and nothing really happens. Another day goes by and one more goes by with no incident and the builders are almost done with the bridge when a group of mercenaries arrive on boats and climb up onto the bridge and the main man himself, Gato, he stepped out in front of everyone and said, huh, seems Zabazan, that boy, girl, whatever he wanted to be, couldn't get the job done, so I guess I'll have to do it myself. And he said, men, go get him. And Naruto, eh, he felt a bit lazy, so he was gonna give the other people in his team a chance to shine. And the first one to take up that offer was Sasuke. He was tired of being in the background and he rushed in. He used fireball jutsu, just every jutsu he had in his arsenal, which wasn't very much. But he was well versed in taijutsu, so he was about to take, take down like 25% of the crowd. And with the help of Kakashi, they took care of the rest, and that's basically it for the Land of Waves. Tazuna does finish the bridge and still calls it the Great Naruto Bridge because Naruto did a lot. Like, if it wasn't for him, they would probably be dead, or at least in his eyes, because of the whole uh, Zabuza thing. And he was a S rank ninja that Naruto took down so easily. So Naruto and Team 7 went back to the leaf to report a mission success. So back in the village, they go to the Hokage's office to receive their reward for the now upgraded to a B rank mission because of the, you know, Kikashi told Hiruzen about the situation and they upgraded it to a B rank mission so they got paid accordingly and Naruto made sure of that. Naruto loves his money. So onto the tuning exams thing, you know, Kakashi tells the team even before they went to the Okage's office that they were that the Leaf was hosting the next tuning exams and if they will be interested. And of course, everyone says yes. Like why would they? So Team Seven got two weeks to train up. During this time, Naruto remained the lazy Naruto he is and. Karin, she learned earth style jutsu, uh, like mud wall and just more defensive jutsu, while Sasuke expanded his fire style, his fire style jutsus, like he now knows great fireball jutsu and phoenix flame. So a day before these uh, tuning exams, Naruto is called in by Hiruzen for a mission because he is after all a Ambu member, he never resigned that role, he just joined Team 7. So Hiruzen told Naruto about some rumors, other Ambu members that were stationed in the uh, Land of Wind heard about you know, their plans for the tuning exams and that Gara was the main pillar of his plans. So Hiruzen taxed Naruto with the assassination of Gara. And yes, it is a tail beast and this could possibly you know, start war, but if they frame it as sort of the sand attacking the leaf, it wouldn't be that bad. So Naruto had no quarrels and accepted the mission. So the next day, he met up with Sasuke and Karin at the uh, academy where they would be doing the tuning exams. The team walk in and are immediately being blocked at the doorway by a bunch of people trying to get into the exam room which is being blocked by tunings. 
And of course, Sasuke was the first one to realize that this was just a genjutsu and that they should move on. So he tells this to Karin and Naruto and they do so. They head upstairs where they bump into Team Guy. And uh, Lee was ready, like he was really enthusiastic. He came to Naruto and he said, oh my god, I've heard like stories of you and how you became like one of the youngest Ambu members. Can you please fight me? And Naruto just looked at Lee and said, nah, and just walked off. And Lee's like, nah, what? And he's like, wait, no, you, please, just, just one, was just one spar. And Naruto's like, no, bro, no. And he's like, why? He's like, just no. <laughs> so Naruto and the rest of his team, they walk into the like, room where all the other uh, contestants are waiting. And as soon as they walk in, Ibiki comes in and says, All right, everyone, shut up. Come into the room and take a seat. Your, all, your names are at the desk you're supposed to sit at. And everyone goes in and they all sit down and they realize they're pretty far away from all their team members. And Ibiki explains the rules of this first stage of the cheating exams, telling them that they are not allowed to cheat. And if they do cheat, they will be kicked out. So, and they can't move on without all three members of their team. So, once one person gets kicked out, that's basically it for the entire team. So, this first stage begins and everyone is doing pretty well. Naruto, Naruto isn't dumb, but these are very, like, mathematical questions like tangents and things like that. So, Naruto isn't versed in any of that. So, just like canon, bro just leaves the paper blank. And uh, Sasuke still does the same thing he does with the whole um, copying people's hand movements. And Karin is, she's really smart. So she basically answers almost everything right without having to cheat. And as time goes on, there are people starting to get caught left, right and center. And by the end of it, it's time for the final question. And around 60% of the people that were originally there are still there now. So Ibiki goes on to explain that if you get this one wrong, you will be barred from taking the tuning exams forever. And everyone just buckled under the pressure and a lot of people left, like 30% left. So now there was only 30% of the original students left in the room. And this all included the Konoha 12. And time for the 10th question, and Ibiki just says, well, there is no 10th question. It was a trick, a logical deception to see if you are all worthy to be, almost said heroes, <laughs> to see if you're all ready to promote, to be promoted to tuning. And then he said, all right, that's my stage done. Just wait here for that crazy girl to come pick you guys up. And everyone's like crazy pick us up and he's the, they're wondering like what is he talking about but then uncle come busting through the window and says all right maggots meet me at the force of death now 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 and everyone's like they're they're pumped up they're excited and they run out to the force of death for the second stage of the tuning exams so a crowd of people gathered to hear the instructions and uncle says things like killing is allowed and she explains the whole scroll system where once you have two scrolls you can head towards the middle of the force of death. That's the manner. So everyone uh, says okay and they have to sign an agreement about the whole killing thing. And then they get their scrolls. Team 7 got the heaven scroll and went to their gate to await the countdown for the start of the exams. And it didn't take long for uncle to hand out the rest of the scrolls and Naruto and his team got the go signal. They rushed into the force of death jumping from tree branch to tree branch until a huge snake tried like attacking them but Naruto yelled like jump higher like so they jumped to higher branches where the snake couldn't reach them. They kept on jumping until they saw a huge fireball coming towards them but Sasuke jumped in the way weaving the hands for a fire style great fireball jutsu. Both fireballs collide and just cancel each other out. And then when it fades away, um, Team 7 sees this female ninja just standing there from the grass village. 
The ninja started licking her lips, looking at Sasuke, and Naruto said, Yo, Sasuke, I think she is, I think she likes you. And he turns around to Naruto to tell him to just shut up. But something they both didn't see coming was the head of this female ninja flying towards Sasuke and bit down on his neck. Naruto quickly used Snatch and pulled out Urchimaru's heart and crushed it and the body fell to the branches into the forest below, killing him. Or so he thought. Sasuke was in pain and he held the bite area and Karin, Karin ran over and told him to bite down on her, on her arm. He did and even though it was painful for Karin, Sasuke felt worlds better and was able to move around. So Naruto used his own version of a tracking ability with his sense of smell because it was really good. He used that to track people who were even miles away. With Sasuke a bit weakened right now, Naruto didn't want to run into any risk even though he could probably, not probably, he could take everyone down in this forest. So Team 7 started going around and picking off easy teams to take their scrolls. They went through two teams until they found one with the earth scroll they needed. And with that, Team 7 headed to the mansion in the middle of the whole force of death. And luckily too, because even though Sasuke felt fine, the curse mark was weakening him from the inside and as soon as they were outside the mansion, he collapsed and Naruto had to drag him inside. So in there, they opened their scrolls and um, Kakashi came out. At first, he thought like they opened it early because they were there like in really good time. But Kakashi saw the two scrolls and just thought to himself, like, wh what did he expect? It's Naruto. So Naruto handed Sasuke over to him and told him that a guy bit him on, a ne on his neck. And Kakashi starts to think the only shinobi he knows that is known to bite people on their neck is that damn pedo Orochimaru. So he took Sasuke to have his curse mark sealed and reported what Naruto said to the Okage. Hearing this, the Okage immediately sent out a search party in the force of death to try and find Orochimaru. So while that is happening, in the whole mansion, it was just Karin and Naruto waiting until Gara and his team walked in. And when Naruto and Gara's eyes met, they both knew who they were, as in they were Junchurikis. But Naruto doesn't care, a mission is a mission and he never fails. So fast forward to the end of the day when everyone finally arrives and Hiruzen calls them into another room. It was this huge open space and it had a statue of a hand at one end, uh, like a hand sign. So Hiruzen gathered everyone and started to explain how many people, uh, too many people passed and they will be doing preliminary rounds to decide who will move on. And with that, a screen behind Hiruzen started scrolling through names until it stopped on Kiba and Naruto. So Hiruzen said, okay, all the other Genins move up to the viewing platform. Naruto smirked at Kiba, who was uh, really confident. Because the last time Kiba fought Naruto, they were 10, and back then, Naruto was weak as ever. So as soon as the Proctor started the match, uh, and Akamaru did the Man Beast transformation, and Kiba who was actually Akamaru, started spinning around and flew towards Naruto. Before he hit him, Naruto kicked upwards, knocking the clone back, and Kiba had to catch him. Naruto started uh, like cracking his knuckles and said, Kiba, let me show you what really sets us apart. And Naruto used one of his other abilities, Hunter Fest. In a hundred foot radius, any living creature's strength begin to drain into Naruto. The people viewing the match, the Proctor, even Hiruzen, started feeling weaker, some falling to their knees. While Naruto was growing taller and buffer and ripping through his clothes, until his body couldn't handle any more power. Naruto looked nothing like his usual self. He ran at Kiba and punched him into the ground repeatedly and this broke uh, like a massive hole into the ground. And Akamaru, who was back in his, into his dog form, bit on Naruto's leg and he just chuckled. He turned around and kicked the dog across the room like a football. And with that, 
uh, the little strength he and with the little strength he had, the proctor declared Naruto the winner, and he walked up to the viewing area. And as he did, the strength he amassed started leaving him and returning to everyone else. So when he got to his team, Karin told Naruto to bite down on her arm because Hunter Fest does strain his body and he was visibly exhausted. Naruto bit down and it was like magic, he was fine. Naruto said, damn Karin, that's a pretty useful ability. And Karin blushed a bit at Naruto's compliment and the two went back to watch the further matches. So nothing much changes with these fights and it's Karin versus Ino this time. Even if Ino does mind transfer, I don't see her winning so Karin takes a W. And now it's time for the one month training period. During this time, Naruto meets Jiraiya. He was going to a hot spring when he saw an old man peeping into the woman's side. He got angry at the old geezer and kicked him away. Jiraiya fell on the ground and he said, hey, don't you see me trying to get some research? And Jiraiya looked up and when he did, he swear he saw Minato for a second, but he realized it was his godson. Jiraiya was speechless and ran up and hugged Naruto tightly. Naruto didn't know what to do and just patted Jiraiya on the back. Jiraiya released the hug and said, it really, it's really great to see you, you look just like your father. And Naruto said, my who? And Jiraiya tried playing it off, but Naruto knew what he said and, and said, don't worry old man, you have to have like zero IQ to not see the resemblance between me and the fourth. <laughs> Jiraiya nodded a bit in agreement and then Naruto asked, so how do you know me? And Jiraiya responded, well, I'm your godfather. And Naruto paused and said, wow, godfather of the year. And this kind of stung a bit for Jiraiya because he knew he should have been there more for his godson, but there was no time to be sad uh, because of the past. So Jiraiya asked Naruto if he wanted to wanted him to train him, and Naruto just refused. Jiraiya paused for a second and said, are you sure? And Naruto said, either ways, I'm stronger than you, so it doesn't really make sense. Jiraiya said, uh-huh, stronger than me. Alright, prove it. And Naruto laughed and said, Okay, uh, I won't move and you can use your strongest jutsu and get a free hit on me. And if I don't like get seriously injured, I'll train with you. And Jiraiya hesitated for a bit but he said, yeah, sure. And he pulled out the Rasengan and he formed it. And though he was holding back, it was still around 60% of the original strength. So he slammed it into Naruto's stomach and his skin twisted around but he didn't fly away, he didn't like come really injure him or anything. And Jiraiya was confused and even more so when his, when his skin that was like a bit injured started regenerating itself right in front of his eyes. And Jiraiya was thinking how this was even possible. So Naruto said, well, see you around old man, and Jiraiya couldn't do anything but watch him walk away. So after that encounter, Naruto went to one of the shops, uh, one of the clothing stores, and got and picked out something similar to what Bon wore in the you know, Seven Deadly Sins, a red jacket and red pants, with these like a silver, I don't even know what you call them, silver bead buttons all around them. Whatever it was, he got that. So for the rest of the month, Naruto actually hanged out with Karin. He didn't know many people in the leaf, so the only other person he got along with was her. So she would manage to get Naruto to train with his, la which his lazy self like, never does. And from training with Naruto, Karin actually increased her reaction time because she got used to Naruto's speed and could react. So, time for the third stage of the tuning exams. Naruto and his team went up to the viewing area up until the first Genins were called, Naruto and Gara. They faced off, uh, then the Proctor yelled, fight, and without hesitation, to seize the moment he had to complete his mission, Naruto used a technique he developed long ago, Assault Hunt. At max speed, he dashed towards Gara too quick for his son to react and Naruto extended his arm 
and the force from this was enough to send Gara's head flying off, and his body fell to the ground. Everyone was in silence, and Konkuro and Tamari were holding back their anger but couldn't for long. Tamari gave the signal, and all the San Shinobi in hiding launched their attack on the leaf. Konkuro and Tamari rushed Naruto. Naruto was reckless, but he wasn't dumb. Konkuro was a puppet master, and puppet masters often use poison, which could be you know, bothersome. So he dashed at him and kicked him in the face, knocking him over, and still with his foot on his face, Konkuro slid across the ground. Tamari like whipped out her fan to use some of her wind attacks, but Naruto used physical hunt, draining her ab physical abilities, and she was too weak to even lift her own fan. And Naruto started punching her repeatedly, and she coughed up blood from, and like from behind him, Konkuro was preparing an attack, but Karin had Naruto's back. She used her chains and slashed Konkuro repeatedly in the back, and this was severe, leaving him on the edge of death. Meanwhile, Hiruzen was being attacked by quote-unquote Kazekage, who lured him into his four-corner seal, and revealing his true self to be Orochimaru. This fight doesn't change at all, so unfortunately the third dies, leaving Orochimaru unable to perform any jutsu. While the whole fight with, the, with Orochimaru and Hiruzen was going on, Sasuke was watching and he saw how the people in the four corners, they had the same mark he had, so maybe he could be as strong if not stronger than them. So when the bar barrier fell, the four went to Orochimaru and aided him and Kuka uh, not Kakashi, Sasuke followed behind them from a distance to their hideout. So back with the rest of the Leaf Village and the San Shinobis were being picked off quickly with the help of Naruto and with another 10 minutes all the shinobi were either killed or ran away. The aftermath of the battle wasn't too bad until Naruto was informed that the third died. Naruto didn't know what to feel, he was sad but couldn't cry and Karin just hugged Naruto. She knew obviously the villagers loved Hiruzen but it was different with Naruto, it was like the father he never had. But this drove Naruto to be even better and to one day become you know, the Hokage to fill in for Hiruzen. So time skipped a week later and Naruto was assigned a mission by the, el by the like, elders in the council. They have decided that the best shinobi for the seat as the next Hokage would be Lady Sonati. Naruto accepted his mission and this was a S rank uh, solo mission. And Naruto went around to the surrounding towns and showed bartenders, restaurant owners, and waiters a picture he had of Sanade, but no one knew her. He did this for a couple days, so Naruto decided to rely on his own senses, smell to be specific. He didn't have anything to match her scent to, but he just smelled for alcohol because he heard she was like a drunk. And he went around to almost every bar until he found the one. Sonade and Shizune were at the same bar as Canon, and she was drunk out of her mind. Naruto came up to the two and told Sonade about the village's situation. And also, since this is an Ambu mission, Naruto still had his like fo fox mask on and his Ambu style armor. Sonade started to slur her words, saying. I ain't going back to that damn village and she's like hiccuping and things like that. So Shizune just looked embarrassed for uh, Sonade and you know maybe you know, she tried to tell Sonade maybe when she sobers up she should make a decision but Naruto wasn't a patient, wasn't a patient type. So he slowly started absorbing Sonade's um, physical strength making her weak and pass out. Naruto said, well, seems we're going to the village, and he grabbed Sonade and slumped her over his shoulder and ran. Shizune, Shizune was like, what the hell, and gave chase to Naruto. All night they ran until they finally reached the village. Naruto took Sonade to the hospital, and Shizune, who was like holding her knees and breathing heavily, said, what was that for? 
And Naruto said, the council gave me a mission to bring Sanade back, so not to convince her to be Hokage, so my job here is done. And he walked out. So things with Sanade didn't go too well, you know, she didn't appreciate being dragged against her will to the village. But with some convincing from the elders and a bit of bribery, you know, they told her they would pay off all her debts, Sanade agreed to become Hokage. So while Naruto was training with Karin, he was approached by Jiraiya. He said, Naruto, you seem like you have nothing to do. How about you help me capture some dangerous people? And those words alone got Naruto interested. Like finally some action. But Karin, asked, Karin also asked if she could tag along since and Naruto didn't have a problem. And Jiraiya said, no, it's okay with me. I don't want to get in the way of young love. Naruto didn't know what Jiraiya was on about, but Karin's face was almost as red as her hair. So for the time skip, Naruto during this time grew into his whole Bond persona, not only physically, because Naruto was now like 6'5", but also being, you know, in many fights, coming out completely fine, Naruto just lost a part of him. He grew more reckless, but you know, good thing. People like Jiraiya and Karin were there to knock some sense into him sometimes. And because of his unique abilities and seemingly not being able to die, he earned the nickname Undead Naruto. During the three year period, Naruto, Jiraiya and Karin were mainly investigating the Akatsuki and are waiting for the re reappearance of the One Tails before the Akatsuki could get their hand on it. But you know what they didn't know was the Akatsuki had an upper hand. With Payne's Renegon, he could see where the Biju Chakra was like amassing enough for it to reappear. And it was on the border of the Land of Fire and the Land of Wind. So as it appeared in the air, it landed and a huge shockwave was felt around the different nations. And Naruto could tell that this was the not this was the One Tails. So they both went towards the epicenter, but it would take you know, a few hours to get there. And the Akatsuki was already there, and Tobi come with the Biju back to their hideout for extraction. When Naruto and Jiraiya finally arrived, they were already way too late, and only to see like a crater left behind from where Shikaku landed on the ground. So Jiraiya, Naruto, and Karin uh, decided to return to the village to report that the Akatsuki had you know, the one tails along with the other tailed beasts because the Akatsuki were growing worried about the Leafs undead Naruto because literally in the bingo book it says run on sight under Naruto's name because no one has come close to taking down Naruto even high S rank ninja so the Akatsuki were hoping to use the ten tails to destroy Naruto and extract the final bit of the nine tails so it took a couple of days for Jiraiya, Naruto and Karin to return to the village they went immediately to Sanade to report that they were unsuccessful in capturing the One Tails. Sanade tried to be optimistic. She said, "Like, don't worry, the Akatsuki can't be, you know, too close in completing their plan. So we still have a bit of time." But as she says that, a massive explosion went off in the forest surrounding the Leaf. Naruto ran to the nearest window and saw a huge stone statue just standing out there and didn't know what it was. So he and Jiraiya went out to investigate and as they got closer, the eyes of the statue began to open and rays of light started beaming off it and it exploded. Violent winds rushed from it and rose the ten tails. The beast was wild and it ran for the village. There was nothing Naruto could do to stop it. The beast started launch, la, la, I can't speak, launching biju bombs on the village, killing ma massive amounts of civilians. Naruto had to think fast. He ran back to the Hokage Tower and told Sanade he'll take care of it, just take Karin to safety. And Karin was like, I, what do you mean you'll take care of it? And Naruto just said, don't worry, you know, he'll be there, he'll be with her in a bit. Naruto went over to where the beast was rampaging and on its head, Madara was standing along with Obito. He said to himself, so those are the people responsible, I'll take care of them later. So 
Naruto stopped to focus on the Ten Tails and its power, and he began to absorb it. At first, the beast was still running around smashing houses, but it began to noticeably slow down, and Naruto's body began to grow massively. This was basically suicide, his body would never be able to handle all of its power, but if he absorbs it all and dies, he hopes that it will end the Ten Tails. Naruto kept absorbing the power and the ten tails shrunk in size down to the height of a regular building and Naruto's body was like at its breaking point but he still had to deal with Obito and Madara. Naruto used his uh, uh, new powers to fight. With the ten tails powers he was now over 8 foot in height and just huge overall. He disappeared from Madara's vision, appearing behind him and punched him so hard, he imploded from the incredible force just packed into Naruto's tiny frame. Well, I mean tiny compared to, you know, the size of the Tentails. So Obito tried calming away, but Naruto grabbed his arm and ripped him out. He jabbed his fingers into his eyes, destroying the Sharingan. And right as he was about to f deliver the final blow, Naruto's body succumbed to the power. It couldn't handle it anymore and the strain was too much and he fell over, dead. Karin was watching this unfold and just ran out crying seeing Naruto collapse. She went over to his body and it began to like shrivel up like, like a raisin I guess. And all his injuries he had over the years were starting to take effect. And Karin's tears were dripping over Naruto. From Naruto's point of view, he was surrounded by a dark void. He said, so, this is what death is. It's a bit boring than I thought. But then a man started floating down towards him. He had a black staff and said, so my son, you have finally come. And Naruto raised an eyebrow and said, Oh man, you've probably been in here too long. I'm not your son. Hagoromo said, But you are. You just don't know it. But more importantly, how is it here? Do you like it? And Naruto said, Nah, nah it's, it's pretty boring. Hagoromo chuckled a bit and said, Well, I, I thought so. I'll grant you this. I can bring you back to your old world. You'll still have your powers, but I'll be taking the tail beast from you. Seems like they've caused more harm than good. And Naruto said, yeah, you're probably right. And Hagoromo spoke again. He said, raise your dominant hand. Naruto raised his right hand and the sun seal appeared on his palm. And Naruto was transported back, back to the leaf. And Karin was still crying her eyes out. And Kakashi was standing like close by trying to hold back the tears. But something no one realized was Naruto's body began to return to its normal state, his skin returning, you know, to being how it was, and Naruto was growing, like growing in height, back to his six foot frame. But he, when he opened his eyes, Naruto saw Karin crying over him, and he felt bad for making her cry, and he raised his hand and pulled her head down into a kiss. She was surprised and hugged Naruto tightly. After a couple seconds, she backed off a bit cause she had so many questions but they had more important issues. They looked around and almost nothing was left of the village. Then Kakashi walked up to Naruto and said, good to see you back. So, five months go by and the village starts rebuilding itself. Not literally, like the people are rebuilding it, but it's it started looking pretty good. Maybe the attack was a blessing in disguise because this gave them an opportunity up to upgrade the houses. And it was looking more like the houses we see in Boruto. So another time skip, a year and a half, and Sonade had resigned from the position of Hokage and Naruto has married Karin. Together they had an older son and a younger daughter. This time, Naruto is actually the dad of the year because he used a clone to stay with his kids. I honestly don't know why Ken and Naruto never did this, and but yeah, they were full Uzumaki so were masters at sealing jutsu and had massive amounts of chakra. Over the years, Naruto realized his abilities were more than regeneration, it was immortality. 
because as Karin grew older, Naruto was still in his prime and eventually she would die of old age. Naruto could barely go on without her, so he passed down his power to his grandson. You know, because his son was like 50, he didn't want to pass it on to him. He was already too old. So this process of passing down the immortality power through Naruto's family went for generations and generations, securing the leaf from anyone who tries to attack it. And that is where I'm going to be leaving this one off. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked it, like, and if you like my content in general, subscribe. And while you're doing all that, why not comment what you guys thought of the story? Did you like it or what? So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next. What if?